What's going on guys and welcome back. Today we are talking about five saltwater fishing tips for beginners. All right, regardless if you're a freshwater fisherman who is transitioning into saltwater fishing or if you're new to fishing in general and you're just starting with saltwater fishing, hopefully these tips will help you on your journey to becoming a better saltwater fisherman. All right, number five is target specific fish. Now I get a lot of questions and a lot of messages from people asking for advice or tips on how to catch more fish in saltwater. And one of the first things that I ask everybody is what kind of fish are you trying to catch? What are you specifically trying to catch? And most people reply back and they say, you know what, I don't care. I'm just struggling to catch fish in salt water. Um, I just want to catch more fish. And that, unfortunately, is part of the problem. It's kind of like going to a car dealership and asking to buy a car. And when the salesman asks you what kind of car would you like, you say, I don't care, I'm just here for a car. It's too broad of information. Um, to really get you what you want. On top of that, if you are actively searching for tips and information on catching fish, you're going to have a lot more success finding information on specific fish. There are tons and tons of resources and articles and books and videos on how to catch redfish or how to catch trout or how to catch flounder, but there's not a whole lot of information on how to catch fish in salt water. It's just too broad. Now in Galveston, there are three major fish that we target and that's redfish, trout, and flounder. Now each one of those fish, you're going to have to fish for differently. So I really suggest that you go after one fish, you target one specific fish, let's say that it's redfish. And after you kind of learn quite a bit about that, then switch, start uh, learning about how to catch trout. And over time, with all of that information and that knowledge, you're going to learn how to target each one of those fish individually and catch a lot more of them. Now, besides the three major inshore fish, the redfish, the trout, and the flounder, uh, some people like to go and try to catch sharks. Some people like to go offshore and, and catch other species of fish that way. And so, depending on what fish you're targeting, you're also going to need different fishing gear. Some things need to be heavier, some things need to be lighter, which brings us to our next point and that is fishing gear. Number four is fishing gear. Now, this is a weird topic because a lot of fishing gear is very specific and it's all about your personal preference. I, for instance, really like to use bait casters. A lot of people don't like those. A lot of people like to use spinning reels instead. So there is a lot of preference in picking the fishing gear that you want. However, with that being said, depending on what fish that you're targeting, let's say that you're targeting sharks, you're going to want a much heavier rod, a much stronger rod, especially if you're going for those really big sharks. You might want something like this, a rod that has a ton of power, a ton of strength, a reel that has a lot of power, um, stronger line, and that's the kind of gear that you're going to want to go with. Now, if you're doing inshore fishing, chances are you're going to want something More like this. Um, now I've gone over this rod and this reel um, in my past videos. This is the Cajun Custom Rod, the Cajun Coastal. And this is my new Shimano DC, which I absolutely love by the way. Um, but this is something that you would want. This is the kind of setup that you're or you're going to want for inshore fishing. Um, this is great for flounder, it's great for trout, it's great for redfish. And really this is my setup. I like to use medium or medium light power rods with fast action, especially if I'm targeting trout and flounder. Now, if I'm specifically tar targeting redfish, uh, I may jump up to something a little bit heavier power. Now, I will say if you are doing regular saltwater fishing, you're going to want to get a saltwater reel, a saltwater rated reel. The components in saltwater reels are different than freshwater reels, and they help against the breakdown and the corrosion uh, and the rusting that uh, salt water is really, really known for and it can really, really damage uh, freshwater reels really, really quickly. They're just not going to hold up as well as saltwater rated reels. Um, with that being said, those can break down as well. In fact, 
every single time I go fishing, when I come back, I always wash all my reels and my rods down with fresh water. And you'd be surprised at how long those reels will last just by doing that, just by spraying them with fresh water, cleaning them out, and they'll last a really, really long time uh, with next to no maintenance at all. Number three is bait. Um, now, there's a lot of different things that you can do with the type of bait that you're using. Uh, you can go live or you can go artificial. If you're fishing for sharks, let's say in the surf or even some of those really, really big bull reds, you're gonna wanna use live bait. That's just your better option. Um, most sharks aren't going to mess with artificial. I know it's possible to catch them. I have caught them on artificial, but it's very, very rare. Now, if you're fishing for those inshore fish, your redfish, your trout, your flounder, um, live bait absolutely works. Uh, in fact, I've, I've said a few times that one of the best baits that you can use to catch trout in the summer is live croaker. Now, you can also catch redfish and you can catch flounder on that as well. Now, if I'm searching for some of those big bull reds, sometimes I'll use cut bait or um, things like that, and that works really, really well also. Uh, you can also use live shrimp. I don't personally use live or dead shrimp pretty much ever because I want to avoid catching a lot of the trash fish like your whiting and your croaker and your catfish and everything else that in the ocean that bites live shrimp, which is pretty much everything. Um, so I avoid shrimp pretty much at all costs. Um, if I'm using live bait, it's generally going to be cro croaker or cut mullet or crab. That's pretty much it. Those three things I can catch redfish, trout, and flounder on pretty easily. Um, but me personally, I generally like to use artificial. I did an entire video on why I like artificial better than I like live. Um, now it's all preference. Some people really, really like using live bait. Some people only use artificial. Uh, I'm one of those people that use artificial 99% of the time. I just like it better. I have a lot more options. Uh, now, if you are using artificial for those, those game fish that we search for in Galveston, um, because you have a lot more options, you also have to learn a lot more about each individual fish. Like I mentioned before, if you're targeting specific fish, for instance, if you're targeting flounder, they're going to be on the bottom. So you're going to want to drag whatever artificial you're using, kind of bounce it across the bottom. That's how you're going to catch those, uh, those flounder. Same thing with redfish. A lot of redfish are going to be in those shallow waters. So you're going to want to fish shallower waters. You're going to want to, um, in those deeper areas, you're going to want to do the same thing. You want to bounce it across the bottom. You can catch flounder and redfish with the same, um, the same setup and the same presentation. Trout, on the other hand, generally like deeper water. They like the guts. They like to sit in that. So on trout, I generally use either top waters or I'm moving my artificial, my paddle tails and things like that much quicker through the water to keep them bouncing up towards the surface. Um, but you've got to figure out again, what fish you're targeting, what baits and what artificials you'd like to use best for that fish. And that's just how you learn. Number two, is location. Now I don't mean a specific location on the map. What I mean is once you get to your fishing location, how to target specific fish that you're looking for. For instance, flounder generally like to be around structure. So if you can find under uh, water structure, or if you can find uh, areas that have rock piles and things like that, that's where flounder really like to be. If I'm targeting uh, flounder, I generally like to go to the ship channel. There's tons and tons and tons of structure. And during the flounder run in, you know, that October, November timeframe, that's where I go. Uh, I can generally get a limit of flounder, you know, within an hour or two. It's really, really easy. If you're targeting redfish and you get to your location, generally redfish like really, really shallow water. That's why going into the marshes and some of those shallower areas is really, really prime areas for redfish. They like that shallow water. Even if you're wading and you're in deeper water, generally you want to fish the, the grass line in that, that area that's closer to the shoreline because that's where redfish are going to be targeting bait. Now trout, on the other hand, they generally like deeper water. So I like when I'm chasing trout to, to get to that much deeper water. And sometimes you can catch smaller trout in shallower water, but generally the bigger trout that I'm really looking for are going to be much, much deeper. That's where I go. They also like to sit in those guts and kind of ambush fish. And so that's what, what I'm looking for. Now there are areas that you can catch all three, trout, redfish, and flounder. You just gotta find the right spots. You're not going to be able to catch a lot of trout in the marshes in the really, really shallow areas. 
um, you're only going to catch redfish and flounder. Now I have caught trout, but it's, it's very, very rare. But if you're trying to catch all three, then you're gonna to wanna to go to an area that has shallow areas, that has really deep areas, that has structure. And there's quite a few places that you can go and find those. Uh, many of the times that I've actually gotten a full slam, which is catching all three of those in one day, um, is normally when I'm wade fishing and I'm in that kind of waist to chest deep water. If I'm catching redfish, it's normally towards the shore. As I back up or I cast into deeper water, I'm, that's when I start catching some of those trout and then occasionally I'll, I'll get some of those flounder as well. Number one is learning fishing conditions. That's the outside conditions that includes the, the weather and it includes uh, tidal changes and the major and minor feeding periods and all of that. And once you start to learn a lot of that, you can start targeting fish a lot easier. You'll know the times to go, when to be there, when you're going to have your best luck to catching fish. I did a video last year on how to understand weather to catch more fish. I'll put a link above if you haven't seen that. Make sure you go check it out because there is a lot of information. When it comes to conditions, you need to learn weather conditions and that is probably the most helpful tip when it's when it comes to learning to target certain fish and learning to catch more fish in salt water. Um, the weather has a huge, huge impact on where the fish are going to be, when they're going to be biting. There's a lot that goes into the weather. When you have certain winds, fish are generally going to stack up on certain areas. And so once you start learning some of that, you'll, you'll understand where you need to go or where your starting point is as far as locations. On top of that, if you're watching things like tidal movements, Tidal movements are great, especially if you're in those, uh, the marshes and in the bays where you have inlets and outlets, because when the tidal changes, you're going to have a lot of water running in and out of those areas. And when that happens, so do fish. And so those are really, really good areas to kind of wade or kayak to or things like that, um, because it's just one of those prime locations where fish are definitely going to be moving in and out during those tidal periods. So make sure you check out the tide charts. Uh, you can get those at pretty much any bait shop. Those are also online. I have a lot of apps that I use to watch the tides. Now, every single day, you're also going to have a major and minor feeding period. Make sure that you watch those. There, there are a ton of apps that tell you exactly when those major and minor feeding periods are going to be. And if you kind of calculate when you're going to be there or when you need to get there so that you're hitting those major and minor feedings, you're going to catch more fish. Um, that, that's really, really important, especially for trout. It's not as big of a deal when you're chasing redfish and flounder, uh, especially if you're in that shallower water, it, it doesn't have as big of an impact. However, the weather does. The weather definitely changes where those fish are going to be and when they're biting. And so if you, if you learn the forecast, if you learn the tides, if you watch the, the, uh, major and minor feeding periods, you're just going to have a lot more luck locating and targeting certain fish at certain times and it's just a lot easier. All right guys, well I hope this video helped, uh, especially if you are getting into saltwater fishing, if you're new to it or if you're transitioning from freshwater, I hope this video um, helped you move along into understanding how to catch more fish in saltwater. If you like the video, please subscribe, hit that like button below, comment, and uh, thank you again for watching. I appreciate every one of you and we will see you next time.